Good evening, everyone. Uh, instead of a speech on this topic this evening, I want instead to give you a bit more, or well, a bit of an update on what's going on with Brexit since the interview I've got uh, that was showing at half past seven with Brian Sylvester. So that was recorded yesterday, but since then we've had some developments and I want to share those with you, but also give some clarification on some other matters that we'll be talking about. So first piece to clarify is what are the sticking points in the current negotiations between the UK and the EU on the on our trade. So our we will stop the UK will stop obeying EU rules on the 31st of December. And it is according to latest news, we'll get which I'll get to in a minute, looking less likely that we'll be able to reach a trade deal between now and the 31st of December. The sticking points are the are fishing rights and the EU wants to keep the common fisheries policy, which is that the European waters are common and open to anyone to fish them. The UK wants its own fishing waters back and a 12 mile, 12 mile zone of its own fishing waters, uh, which I think is non-negotiable. And I'm hoping that the British government will actually demand this and keep demanding it and hold its nerve on this. Another one is the Euro the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice and it wants the EU wants it to be the ruler on disputes between the UK and the EU on any future trade agreement. The likelihood is that the well the potential for bias on the part of the ECJ which interprets law in in favor of greater unification and uh, very much not in favor of countries breaking away from the EU as the UK has done. So needless to say, the UK doesn't want to be, doesn't want the decision maker to be the ECJ. So they want to create a new arbiter, a new body to oversee this. The level playing field is also an issue. Now what this means is that the EU wants the UK to stick to similar policy or the same policy on things like environmental regulations or workers' rights or state aid. The EU wants this to prevent the UK becoming, well, gaining a competi competitive edge over them by, for example, being able to give subsidies to farmers, and this, this would be the, the state aid element of it, uh, or indeed environmental regulations. At the point of that, the point of leaving the EU was to be able to make our own rules, regulations and laws and to have to be, to have to maintain the same laws on crucial parts of our economy and our society as the EU is not breaking away, it is not leaving the EU. So those are the main sticking points. The withdrawal agreement on these issues essentially says that the uh, we will remain under the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice until the transition period ends and that a on the jurisdiction of or the on the fishing rights that a separate agreement must be reached well that's the agreement that people are trying to reach now and can't and it seems to me to be probably the difficult one you either have uh, shared waters or you don't but the whole point of it is to get coastal waters back for the UK and for the coastal economy in the UK and that has to be non-negotiable, acting in the best interest of the coastal communities and economy in this country has to be non-negotiable. So the latest news is that trade talks to, according to the BBC this afternoon, UK-EU talks to reach a post-Brexit trade deal are unlikely to continue after Sunday. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab has said. His comments come after a meeting between Boris Johnson and EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen aimed at breaking the Brexit trade deadlock. Mrs von der Leyen said she had a good conversation, but it is difficult. Another development since I spoke to Brian yesterday is that the EU has set out its measures in the event of a no deal by the end of the 31st of December. 
again, according to the BBC. The EU has published contingency plans in case of the possible collapse of Brexit trade talks with the UK. The plans aim to ensure smooth UK-EU air, road, air and road travel, as well as allowing the possibility of fishing access to each other's waters. They come after talks between UK PM Boris Johnson and EU Chief Ursula von der Leyen, aimed at ending a deadlock over the deal ended without agreement. The UK is due to stop free stop following EU trade deals on the 31st or trading rules on the 31st of December. So what happens on the 31st of December in the event of a no deal? Well, the EU's contingency plans in point form, according to this report, to ensure the provision of certain air services between EU, EU and UK to allow aviation safety certificates to be used in EU aircraft without disruption, to ensure basic connectivity for road freight and passenger transport for six months, providing the UK does the same, to allow the possibility of reciprocal, to allow the possibility of reciprocal fishing access for UK and EU vessels in each other's waters for one year or until an agreement was reached. Okay, so according to the EU's plans, if there's no deal at the end of this, uh, we would carry on as we are in terms of fishing for a year. Trading under WTO rules. The government gives quite a lot of guidance for this because this is what is going to happen if we don't reach a deal with the EU by the 31st of December. We'll trade under WTO rules. Now, as it sounds like, these are actual rules and I'll read to you from the government uh, the government's website from 1st of January 2021 if no trade agreement exists between the UK and another country trade with that country will take place under world trade WTO rules WTO rules state that this is the most favored nation rule WTO rules state that the same trading terms must be applied to all WTO members unless there is a trade agreement between two or more countries. Most favoured nation means that the UK cannot offer better trading terms to one country and not another, unless through a trade agreement. So there are rules and there are regulations. However, they allow for the country, for the UK, to make its own trade agreements and to agree for tariff-free trade, for example. We don't know what's going to happen between now and the 31st of December. But I do know what needs to happen, and that is that the British government holds its nerves, sticks to its guns, and makes sure that it acts in the best interests of the British people, particularly with regard to our ability to make our own rules and regulations in the best interests of the British people, and also particularly with regard to the fishing communities and coastal communities that have been so decimated around this country. We need to breathe life back into them and we can only do that if we give them back their fishing waters. We can and will reach a simple trade deal with the European Union but we shouldn't be bullied and we shouldn't be drawn into an agreement where we don't actually have independence at all. This is and always has been about more than trade. It's about sovereignty. It's about the right and ability of the United Kingdom to stand independently as a sovereign nation governed by its people. That's what this is all about. The trade deals will come. There's no, these doom stories, it's not going to happen. We will trade as we always have and always will. It's fairly simple what we need to do. But let's see if we have a government in Boris Johnson's government that is willing and able and have the courage to do it. We'll see what happens between the 31st, between now and the 31st of December. And we will, of course, keep covering this and keep you up to date with it. Enjoy the interview with Brian at half seven. See you later.